You are welcome one more time to God's presence on this um, our breakthrough service because every Friday of our week of embassy is expected to be a breakthrough service. Not just week of embassy alone, but a breakthrough service. And tonight, it shall be a breakthrough service for you. Shout a believing amen. How to activate our heritage of divine wisdom, part 1b. We said that series yesterday. But before I go into, I'm privileged of God to go into this session. Please understand that a gold that shines once passed through a furnace. If you don't, if you don't, if you are not ready to pay the price, you are not set to take the price. That brother shared a testimony. I remember when we went to the mountain last week. By the time we were going, he said, eh, this code has entered my body. But the code entered, but the testimony came out. I was laughing when he was sharing the testimony. If you see the way he was going, it was very, very cold. He said, ah, this code has entered my body. I said, yes. But today, the testimony is showing. Had he been slept at home that day, maybe he would still be praying the same prayer point. To every price, there is a price. I can pray in my house now. I can pray in my house. Why didn't God tell why didn't God tell Abraham in his house? What do you want to tell him on that mountain? Well, that's not a teaching. But what I'm trying to say is this: there's a price to every price. There is a price to every price. There is a there is a test to every test. Glory to God. I pray God will grant us to do what will make us to secure a change. Now, how to activate our heritage of divine wisdom? First Timothy 1 17, the Bible says that now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory. Amen. The only wise God, the only wise God. So God is the original source of wisdom. And every child of God has an heritage of divine wisdom. Say, I have an heritage. Of divine wisdom, like we quoted yesterday, First Corinthians one twenty four, the Bible says, "Christ, the wisdom and the power of God." And Matthew eleven nineteen, it says, "But wisdom is justified of her children." What justifies our sonship is the wisdom of God at work in us. What justifies our sonship? Is the wisdom of God at work in us? Wisdom is justified of our children. What establishes sonship is the wisdom of God. So when we behave foolishly, we do not exhibit our sonship. When we exhibit foolishness, we do not exhibit our sonship. So our Wisdom exhibition is what ex establishes our connection with our Father. My prayer is that from today, none of us will be foolishly again. You know, there's one scripture, 4 Samuel 25 25. 4 Samuel 25 25. The Bible says, Now, let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so he is. So is he. Nabal is his name, and now folly is with him. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst send. His name is foolishness. So he exhibits foolishness. Folly means foolishness. Our father is the wise God. We cannot be a foolish boy. Our father is the only wise God. We cannot be a foolish boy. It's not possible. The name of our father is the almighty God. The all wise God. Only wise God. Then it's our inheritance to exhibit the wisdom of God. So divine wisdom is one of the packages that comes with redemption. Like we were told yesterday, 
Revelation 5 12. The Bible says that um, what is the lamb that was slain to receive for us, among others, power, riches, and wisdom. So Jesus Christ died to possess for us wisdom. And look at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 3. He says, And with joy shall you drop from the wells of salvation. So salvation comes with packages from the wells. If you look at that uh, statement, it's a wells, plural. Wells of salvation. So salvation has packages. Salvation has packages. And one of the packages of salvation is divine wisdom. However, take note that any heritage you don't act on, you stand to lose. Or it ever remains dormant. Any heritage you do not maximize, you do not act on, you stand to lose. Or it remains ever dormant. I am wise, I am wise, and you are still a poor person. You are not wise. I am wise, I am wise, you always seek. No, you are not wise. I am wise, I am wise. Those who are unbelievers are going beyond, you are not wise. So, go and dig out that wisdom. Dig it out and let the world know that you are not a poor person. Dig it out. Remember, the Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 5, the Bible says that cancer in the heart of a man is like deep water. Burning will draw it out. You carry something, draw it out. Cancel, which is also wisdom. Because cancer talks about correct guidance, right guidance. Cancel in the other man is like a deep water. But a man of understanding draws it out. Proverbs 4 7. He said, Wisdom is the principal thing. And with all that I get in, get understanding. So, wisdom and understanding goes together. So, now, if you must express, or if you must explore, let's use that word, explore the riches of your redemption, dig out the wisdom of God you are, that you carry. But how do you dig it out? Through exercise. Hebrews 5 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Only one walk works. But how do we activate our heritage of divine wisdom? How? How do we activate our heritage of divine wisdom? Just a few points tonight. Number one, through the proven love of God. The proven love of God. Love of God. Proven love of God. Proven. Not just, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. That's not proven. Proven love of God. First King three three. First Kings three three. And Solomon loved the Lord. Looking at the status of of David, his father, only he sacrificed. Now, if you look at it, only him sacrificed. Him alone sacrificed thousands. Killing, you know, whether it's a sheep or oxen. On the mountain alone, killing by himself, only him. That is to prove the love. But I like you to understand this. In verse 4 of 1 Kings, he says, And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. So, king go. King, they didn't say, and the entourage. King went. Or that was, for that was the great high place. Not just ordinary place. He went to a high place. A thousand burnt offering did Solomon by himself offer to the Lord. Any love that has no proof is fake. Any love that has no works or works, like we call it here, is fake. That's what the Bible made us understand what they call, there's what they call the labor of love. The works of love. Hebrews 6.10 he says, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Your work. There is a work of love. If you love, you show it. If you are a lover, you will not be quiet when your lover is suffering. If you are a lover, whatever moves
moves your lover moves you. If you're a lover, whatever is hurting your lover is not hurting you. So when God is crying for souls that are dying, you're also crying if you're a lover. When God sees souls perishing, there's so you see, you get your point in my little life that when I pass by somebody smoking cigarette, I say, Ish, it's your fire. That's what my mind. In fact, there's one lady I saw yesterday at one you know garage. As I was, she needed help. That she missed. I mean, she doesn't know the way to her house. Blah 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 blah. So, that can I? Can she please use my? Phone? It's a white girl, white lady. I said, why not? I give her my phone. I start calling, and she relaxed. Ah, she didn't move because my own night time is going. She was calling, 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 calling. And because you know, being a pastor, I don't know who's looking at me. I said, ah, she said, go, 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 go. Eh, eh, ah. I wanted to say, ah. She was angry for me now. <laughs> you know, she was just calling and so relaxed. Somebody's phone. Ah! You know, but you know, spirituality is a very, very wonderful thing. I was just, you know, and I don't take such nonsense. My body was just, I ah, hey, ah. I even look, I say, I do, you know, why? Face, eh? I look, I, I use sign. He didn't even look, I, he was just talking. I say, when na, hi, Mara. Okay. Where, where am I driving at? After I finished, she was hopeless about how to get home. I said, no problem. Um, I'll help you. I'll do this, I'll do that. And I was trying to help her. She just bought cigarettes. Ah, I felt so bad. I said, so in this place, I'm helping. Now, that was where the love of God came in. But it came my spirit, man. She just came for such. Humanly speaking, I felt so bad. Ah, imagine. So I've been talking to someone that will smoke like this. I mean, I'm just telling being human. But now, the Spirit of God made mention, to, made, made mention to me that Jesus came for such people. Jesus did not come for saints. He came for the sinners to make them saints. That's why you don't see me condemn Yahoo Yahoo boys. If you condemn them, where would they succeed? You chase them out of church to hell, ne? So why did Jesus come? With time, they will change. With time, they will change. At least I can count the number of persons that have changed. Just by hearing the word. Not the word of condemnation, but the word of reconciliation. The work of love, the work of love will always have proofs. You can't cover your love for God if you actually have it. It can't be hidden. When I went to the mother last week, I didn't go to pray for money. I went to pray for souls. Pray for people. Hear this. Many of us will be so rich this month. It's not a prayer. There are some prayers I prayed last week. I said, Lord, bless everyone that is ready to give those transports. Anyone who wants to give 30,000, bless them with 100,000. Anyone who wants to give 50,000, bless them with 500,000. I was praying from my heart. So when you see blessings coming, don't do otherwise. Or do the way it's expected. Yes, because they do every of us, and there's a reason. So don't just see a wolf of 200,000 say, hey, yes. Mm -mm. 50,000 is for transport. I bargain with God. The Lord, let this be. Bless anyone whose heart is dead to give to us this. And watch it, it will happen. It's already happening. Because uh, testimony is from someone. But it is the labor of love that come. That it is, it is the, the, the love of God at work in us that commit us to the labor of love. It is the love of God at work in us that commit us to the labor of love a God lover and not work out the things that God loves genuinely genuinely then after Solomon did that he was qualified for a blank check look at in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 5 and the Lord appeared to Solomon what you want ask me what you want ask me what you want ask anything you want blank check due to labor of love now, because of labor of love too, they, Solomon didn't ask for money. He see asked for wisdom, but he got the money. And look at Kings chapter 4, verse 29. First Kings chapter 4, verse 29. The Bible says, and God gave Solomon what? God gave Solomon what? Let's echo it together. God gave Solomon what? 
an understanding exceeding much hey. and largeness of heart even as a sand that is on the seashore ah. wisdom that cannot be counted wisdom that cannot finish wisdom that is you know you can't quantify verse 30 and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the Egypt and all the wisdom of Egypt like I said on Sunday Egypt was the most civilized you know country as at those days based on history so it's just like God gave Solomon wisdom that excelled the wisdom of Jeff Bos. You know, Jeff is the richest man in the world. Wisdom, that is the sea of Amazon. Now, God gave Solomon wisdom that it surpassed, it excelled the wisdom of every human being. You will soon be called the richest man in the world. You see, the people that they call the richest person, they, were, they are also human beings. They also be. They also fat. They also do all that. They are also human beings. So it can also be you. They are no better than you. Why am I using the example of P? Because they are also they are not spirits. They are not spirits. So if we can win the love of God, we will operate in the wisdom of God. If we can win the love of God. Solomon won the love of won the heart of God through the love of God. As a result, he, he, he had direct access to the depth of God. Solomon wrote, okay, let me read it to us. Verse 32. And he spake three thousand proverbs. And his songs were a thousand and five. He spake of trees. Solomon used everything in this world to describe to teach lessons. He said, You slogan, go to the ants. He used everything to describe, I mean, to teach lessons by the wisdom of God. Tonight, that wisdom is coming upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, how do we activate our heritage of divine wisdom? Number one, like I said, through the proven love. But proven, it must be proven. Therefore, from tonight, start looking for souls for God. Before you sleep, before you take your dinner, call five souls that must be in church on Sunday. Prove to God that, Lord, and my heart is there. I'm ready. Lord, this Sunday I must bring 50 souls. Let your heart be for God. And God will surely reward us in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, how do you activate your love? I mean, your, the wisdom of God. Through solution-focused meditation. What did I say? Solution what? Solution what? Solution-focused meditation solution focused many people or many individuals when they have challenges they don't talk of solution they, they, they magnify their challenges ah if you see that accident oh my god chai ha hi what is it ah hey chai you know what is it? now they just magnify and magnify with no solution solution focused meditation hear this the same way you can meditate on your challenges you can meditate on solutions to your challenges for example you are jobless and you are thinking how long will I be jobless eh? there is no job in this country if you go to Cape Town, no job you are also meditating from a negative side eh? no job in fact there is no job that can even I don't think there is job in South Africa eh? imagine oh my job oh my, I don't have a job it's also meditation because meditation is thinking so you are thinking negatively but whereas you can say man I'm the son of the most high God I can't like job in fact I also be providing job you're also meditating positively where your thought goes that's where your answer comes from where your thought goes that's where you so if you are thinking of problems then you complicate problems and bring problems as a solution to your problem which makes you a problem but if you are thinking in terms of solution, summer, summer, you will land in the midst of answers. Genesis 24, verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even tide, and lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Now, 
when you say camels were coming, it might not see, it might not mean camels coming, but it means solution was coming. As he went to meditate in the field, he went to meditate in a field. I like us to understand that meditation is a force that provokes the bath of divine wisdom. Meditation is a that provokes the bath of divine wisdom. Because what is meditation? Meditation is reasoning in line with scriptures to bring in an answer to every bugging question. Reasoning in line with scriptures to bring in an answer to every bugging question. No matter what you are going through, there's an answer in the world. And what became of Isaac? Genesis 26, verse 12. Then Isaac soaked in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man works great. Wisdom will make you great. And the man works great. Isaac had a lifestyle of meditation. As a result, he always he was always in charge of situations. He was great and went forward. This month you are going forward. This month you are waxing great. And grew until he became very great. Very, not just great. He became very great. This month you are becoming very great. Say, I'm becoming very great. Now, verse 14. For he had possession of flocks, possession of herds, and grace of servants, and the Philistines envied him. This month you shall be envied. This month you shall be envied. Say, this month I shall be envied. Unbelievers will envy me. Even my core believers will envy me. You see, it can get to a point that your fellow Christians will be saying, What is the matter now? Are we not going to say, Ah, you buy car, you bought car last month, you bought car this month? Ah, are we not going to say, Are we not in the same word? Hear this. It is personal revelation. Personal revelation. We are the same church members, does not mean that you have the same results. No. Personal revelation with personal application will all make a difference of you know a difference of results. A difference of results. So don't ever say, hey boy, we are winner member. God does not bless groups. God blesses individuals. When you write exam, go for exam, you write, you submit your paper. You don't say these are no, it's my paper. Man, you put your 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 exam number. Is personal in the same way your result will be personal in the same way your meditation must be personal sit down and reason alone with scriptures solution focused solution focused meditation will always hit its target why solution focused is targeting each challenge targeting each problem what is the problem i'm going through now okay why am i jobless okay i'm supposed to be looking for a job or am i supposed to create a job because if you put reason why you are where you are you may be there forever if you don't know why you are where you are you may be there forever so matthew 6 22 the Bible says, if your eyes be single, your whole body shall be full of light. So, which means, when you target that challenge, illumination comes to give you an answer. Now, this is my challenge. Okay, why is my wife not responsible? Why is my business... T- why is it that my ministry is not going forward? Why am I going around the circle? What is the reason? So, how do you meditate you know based on solution focus number one identify the challenge what is your challenge or what the work called problem what is the problem now Luke 14 28 the Bible says for which of you intending to build a tower sit it not down first and count test the cost whether he has sufficient to finish Tell, why am I on the same spot for five years? Okay, why am I praying the same prayer point I prayed last year this year? 
Shiloh, every year, I'm always in the class of marital breakthrough. Why? When will I stop going to that class? Why am I always on the queue of Boro Boro? Okay, what? Know the challenge first. Don't beat, like, don't target, like, it's only beating the air. Imagine somebody that is trying to beat the air. That's where you will die. Because you can't hold the air. So, you must first know the challenge. Then, number two. Itemize scriptural solutions to that situation. What are the scriptural solutions to it? What does scripture have to say about it? That's how to analyze it. Okay, number one, what's my challenge? Maybe you're having a health challenge. Or your career is stagnated. Okay, career stagnation is a challenge. Okay, now, what does scripture have to say about it? For example, you have been believing God for fear of the womb. And the Bible says, in Deuteronomy 15 verse 7, I mean, no, 726. The Bible says that even your cattle, so if the Bible says that your cattle shall not be barren, then it's not expected that you should be barren. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14. He says, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you, not even among your cattle. Now, if God is so mindful of my cattle, that's meditation. So mindful of my cattle, cattle, ordinary cattle, even though in Nigeria they can kill for a cattle. Now, if God is so mindful of your cattle, how much more you in his image? A cattle is not God's image. But God said, even your cattle, that is your dog, your pet, cannot be banned. So if that, that's question, God, if my if my 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 cattle cannot be banned, as long as I'm seeing chicks on the streets, I will have children in my house. As long as I'm seeing chicks, ordinary chicken that you eat every day, like you know. If you have to count the chicken that and, ah, even God will know that no, I've wasted chicken in this world. Simply because you have eaten of chicken. But God, the reason why you eating chicken is because God is still faithful to chickens. If God can be faithful to chickens, how much more you in his image? If chickens have been have stopped too much producing, there won't be KFC again. Business has finished. But God is ever faithful to chickens. How much more human beings of his image? That's meditation. God, I can't be buried. Maybe you are here, you are jobless. The Bible says that in the book of Genesis chapter 2, and the Lord planted a garden and placed Adam inside to keep the garden. There is a garden for you to keep. There is a job somewhere for you. The Bible says, and the Lord planted. Lord, show me where you have planted my job. And the Lord and put Adam there to keep it. So your a job is waiting for you somewhere. Locate it in prayers. A job locate. So that's about this of saying where well, no job in South Africa. No job in South Africa. That's the song some people will sing till they shoot them and die. That is the song they will sing till they go to a place where they will just carry them and deport them to their country. Why? The meditation power is lacking. Solution focused meditation will always bring you out of every stagnation. Solution focused meditation will always bring you out of stagnation. You are stagnated because you refuse to focus on the solution to that challenge. You are looking at the problem. Stop it. Start looking at the solution. Maybe you are here. Your family is full of frustration. And you keep telling yourself, ah, my family will under a curse. Every time curse, 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 curse. Now stop looking at the curse. Start looking at the blessing. My family is on their case. I'm telling you, nobody's married in my family. I'm not sure. I'm not sure they will ever be married. Now you are focusing on the challenges. Focus on the solution. How? By identifying the challenge. Okay, it's a case. Fine. But what does scripture have to say? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For it is written, curse is the man that angered the tree, that the blessing of Abraham may be that of Gentiles. So I am not under a curse because Christ redeemed me. You meditate yourself out of every stagnation of destiny. Meditate yourself out. Meditate yourself out. 
I don't care what your father used to go through. It doesn't matter. That's your father. Your real father is Almighty God. Your earthly father is a caretaker. Your God is Shmetos. So what you cannot see in God is not your portion. Meditation is the answer. Stop seeing the way your father is saying, earthly father. Start seeing the way your heavenly father is saying. And whatever your heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Stop saying what people say. He said, confederacy, what they call confederacy. Don't say what they say. Because when men shall say, you shall say something else. When men shall say, there's a cast now. I said, no, there's a lifting up. This month, you are going up. This month, you are going up. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to know that the solution to every life situation, there is a what solution. There is a what solution. There is a what solution to every life situation. There is a what solution, which means what you are going through as a what solution. In fact, there is a wisdom solution to every life situation. There is a wisdom solution to every life situation. And also, there is a word answer to every life question. There is a wisdom answer to every life question. Luke 15, verse 17. Talking about the story of the prodigal son. After he has squandered extravagantly, voraciously, voraciously, he finished everything. He finished everything that was his right, his portion. Now, and he started suffering. I don't know if you are here, you are suffering. You are a genuine son, but you are looking like a bastard. You are a genuine son, but life is painting you like a bastard. This boy was like a bastard in a foreign country. But through solution focused meditation, Luke 15, 17, and when he came to himself, came to himself simply means that he reasoned inside. He looked at what? Come. <laughs> I'm from a royal family. What am I doing with the pigs? I'm from a royal family. Remember, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. First Peter 2 9. So what are you doing in the midst of mess? Reason yourself out. He came to himself and said, how many higher servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare. In the same way, in heaven there, there is excess of blessings. Why are you suffering on earth? And he said, in his word, and here I am, I'm perishing with hunger. No. No. He came to himself. I will arise and go back to that same father. And I will say unto him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He went back and by the time he got to his father, the Bible says that verse 19, I'm not worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy servants. And verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great far away, far off, his father saw him and had compassion. See, God has been waiting for you. God has been waiting for you. But your meditation is the bridge. God has been waiting. Your meditation, your solution focused meditation is the bridge. If you can just think aright, one second, you cross over. You see, one thought, one right thought brought him out from the state of piggery, eating with pigs. One right thought, one right thought, he came to himself. I don't know how many of us that have been in the same spot because we couldn't think right. He thought, and he came out of it. Number three. How do you on that still on that solution focus meditation? Remember, identify the challenge, itemize the scriptural solution to that situation, and also locate examples in scriptures, like I just quoted now. Examples of those who went through that challenge. What did they do? And that leads me to this. In anything you find yourself, in any challenge you find yourself, apply what is called WWJD. WWJD What will Jesus do? Apply that mentality to any situation. WWJD What would Jesus do? If 
if just were to be in that state of no money in the pocket, what would you just do? If there's no food in the, in the, in the, in the store, what would you just do? If there's no house strength to pay and the, the, the landlord is by the door, what would you just do? Carry that mentality. It will help you every second. What would you just do? Would you just cry the way you are crying? Would you just run away the way you are trying to run away? Every challenge that came the way of Jesus, he stood and overcame them. What would Jesus do? Well, how do we activate the wisdom of God? Number three, is through soul winning and divorce. Through soul winning and divorce. Like you all are aware, Proverbs 11, the Bible says that he that winning a soul is wise. So to win souls makes you wise. To win souls, activate the wisdom of God at work in you. To win souls, generate ideas. Because listen, anyone that is a soul winner is a smart person. Every soul winner is a wise person. Why? You, when you're a genuine soul winner, soul winner, you are always creative. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. Now, as you are applying that wisdom to souls, God is enhancing your capacity in life. As you are, if you look at this our church here, we try to use different means. Okay? We use social media. Okay, we do some, there was a time we started you know, testimony Thursdays, testimony Tuesdays. We're just, just trying everything. Just to ensure that by all means. For example, we're trying to, um, you know, pa a, a package for first timers now. That as they go, they read it. Now, when you, your mind is working for God, your life will be enhanced by God. When your mind is working for God, your life will be enhanced by God. You cannot be carrying God when your mind is creative for God, you will be creating a future for you. So, the mind that works for God is the mind that shines in life. That's why Daniel 12 3 now says, They that turn men to righteousness shall shine, shall shine, shall shine, shall shine, shall shine. So, when you are exhibiting the wisdom of God, you will shine like the brightness of the firmament. And how do you exhibit the wisdom, the wisdom of God? By turning many to righteousness. And as stars forever. So, now, when your mind is, is being activated for the things of God, your life will be on the level of God's operation. Because your mind is no more yours. Your mind has been synergized. Your mind has entered the mind of God to carry out the works of God. As a result, the returns of the mind of God becomes a wonder in your life. Glory to God. First Corinthians 3 6. The Bible says, I plant Apollo's water. <laughs> but God gives the increase. Gives the increase. Verse 7. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Now, look at verse 8. Now, he that planted and he that watered are one. And everyone shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, the own own there shows how personal your engagement is and how personal your reward will be. That's why when they are doing prayer, doing prayer, doing prayer, one to six, one to three, you go outside to go and cheese. You are wasting. You are not helping yourself. When they now do after prayer, they now come back. No, it doesn't work. Every level of engagement in the kingdom has its own level of rewards. God doesn't respect title. He respects your task engaged. Your, your own labor. Your own. Your own. Your own. Your own. Your own. When we do, you know, the Blessed Empowerment Summit, Papa, Bishop, our father, he tells pastors, walk. Pastors, walk. Don't carry title. Of course. Your labor, your labor, labor is what attracts his favor. Your labor. Now, where are we driving at? Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. 
Ye are God's husbandry, and ye are God's building. Now, you cannot walk with the only wise God and remain a dull man. So, now, when you are a co-laborer with God, you exhibit the wisdom of God. There is a measure of God's wisdom that flows into your brain, that flows into your mind, that flows into your heart. Now, I'd like us to know this. When you walk with people that speak English, before you know it, you start speaking big, big English. It is natural. Because it flows. It flows naturally. There are some young children that around me by the time, when I hear them speak English, they say, ah, how do you know this English? Big, big English. Why is it big, big English? They're in the midst of those who speak such. When you stay around, if you stay in Archive View for six months, you speak Sutu. Not because you want, because it will enter your brain by fire, by force. You will speak it naturally. Why? You are in the midst of the people that speak it. You can't be in the midst of the only wise foolish man. It's not possible. You don't need to say, I want wisdom. You have to have it. You have it because you work with him. You talk to him. You relate with him. You act with you, everything with him. Him, 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 him. Automatically, you exhibit him. Every part of him shows in you. Not because you want people to know, but because you can't hide it because it shows. In the same way, the more you walk with God, the more you review God. The more you showcase God. Especially the wisdom of God. And finally, as a close tonight, and that only wise God can check Jude verse 25. Now, through keeping company with the wise, it looks like this previous one, but through keeping company with the wise, Proverbs 13 verse 20, he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But the company of fools, he that walketh with the wise, so you cannot be walking with the wise God and be a foolish man. You cannot be walking, so the company you keep matters. Are you having a company of soul winners or company of soul destroyers? Are you having a company of those who are passionate for God and his kingdom? Are you... They will pray in church, they will curse in the streets. They will pray in church, they will do uh, 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 in the streets. Ask yourself, who are my friends? You cannot be relating with wise people and be a foolish man. It's not possible. Show me your friend, I will tell you how you will end. Show me your friend, I will tell you who you are. So, the relationship you keep determines what flows into your mind. My prayer is that um, tonight we shall be freshly baptized with the wisdom of God. And as we wrap up tonight, expected to go out tomorrow morning, everybody, and to go and exhibit this wisdom. He that winning a soul is wise. Go out tomorrow. If you know where you can go and get your 50 souls, go there yourself. If you know you don't know anywhere, come to church. By all means, because this Sunday, you must have what to show. Say big amen. When you hear soul winning, don't withdraw. It's a, it's, it doesn't show our love for God. This Sunday, we must have what to show. We must not be a barren winner. We must be fruitful. We must bring souls to show that Lord, these are my souls. This, now, the reason why some testimonies that happen in Kenya doesn't happen in some stations outside of Nigeria or Africa is because people outside are not doing what they are doing. They go extra mile. You hear somebody you know, trekking to share flyers from a place like this to Pretoria East. Trekking. Someone was like, Ish, no, Pastor. I can't do that. You can't do what? You can't do what? It's because you don't understand the worth. And what you can so I like us to know nothing drives a believer like passion is still worship. Nothing drives a believer like passion is still worship. And what a fuel is to a car is what a, is what Z is to a believer. The fuel in the car runs the car. In the same way, the Z in the believer is what drives the believer. Let the zeal of the house of the Lord. Let it consume you. 
and tonight it shall consume us. No car can be in motion without fuel. Neither can it be pushed to start. You can that has a fuel to start. But you can't push a car that doesn't have fuel to start. It can't start anything. It's a life of struggles. So, a believer without zeal, no matter how hard he pushes, he may, he may never get results. Let's go, evangelism. Oh. We went last week now. Oh, yeah, let's go. The person cannot get any soul. He, he, he himself is lost. He himself needs to be saved because he's lost already. Oh, yeah, let's go, let's go. God loves you, take, my friend. They will beat him back. Why? Because he himself is lost. Don't say because there's no Z. You only push him to go. Let's go. Let's go. In fact, he will spoil that out. Because you'll be angry, you fight, and as a result, the people you are to preach to, they'll be preaching to you. Stop fighting now. Stop fighting now. Stop fighting now. You forgot that you are the soul winner. <laughs> they come and save your soul. Why? Because... So at this communion table tonight, we must all believe for fresh baptism of the Christ order of Z. So as to maximize the blessings reserved for us in Operation Commerce. Say big amen. Remember, the communion is ordained for us to live like Christ. John 6, 57. He that eateth me shall live by me. We are expected to live like God. To live by